Hi, this is Lisa, and you are listening to I Love That Movie. This podcast is for movie lovers. It's not an unbiased opinion. It's not a straightforward review. It's just a couple people talking about a movie that they love. The format is each week I have a guest, and that guest and I discuss a movie that they love, something they're obsessed with, something they connect with. We'll talk about the plot, the director, and the actors, but we'll also talk about the personal connection my guest has with that movie. So if that sounds like something you want to listen to, keep listening. This is Lisa, and if you want to catch up with me on Twitter, you can find me at ILTM Podcast. I'm also on Instagram at I Love That Movie Podcast, and we have a Patreon. Uh, our show is always free, but if you want to support us on there, you can at Patreon.com/slash I Love That Movie. And I want to take a moment to thank my top patrons, and they are Chris Balga, Michael Cross, and Philip Barker. Thank you guys so much for keeping the lights on. Um, and if you sign up, you do get bonus episodes of uh, right now we're covering The Mandalorian. So each week I've been having a guest and we cover The Mandalorian on there. So if you want those episodes, you do have to sign up for the Patreon, but it's only like a dollar. So it's pretty inexpensive. Um, and then as long, uh, also I'll have my weekly roundup on there as well. of Just everything else that I'm watching besides these weekly movies. So appreciate you guys. We've also got a website, we've got a Discord and a Facebook group. Uh, so join us on there. So many different ways to reach out and chat about the show. Um, I've got a new guest with me here today. I've got Melissa Nicholson. Say hi, Melissa. Hello. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for coming on. And for anyone that hasn't heard your voice on the show before, uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Well, as you said, I'm Melissa Nicholson, and I'm also a uh, podcast host. I host a podcast called Nerd Knighted Nations Podcast, and it's basically a podcast talking about all things nerdy, from uh, TV shows to movies to comic books to just anything and everything that you could fit under the umbrella of nerd, So, which is a pretty big umbrella. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and I'm definitely a I'm a anything what else um I'm I'm a nerd and I'm proud of it there you and go also a Hoobian. <laughs> awesome yeah you're in good company then I feel like you know we're all nerds here and then there's a lot of Hoovians I'm sure on the podcast you'll probably have to teach me a little bit about that I have my best friend Kara that's been on the show several times has tried for years to convert me um oh, yeah. so I've seen like all the Christmas episodes um but I still need, I need more education in that department. So maybe you can help me with that. <laughs> the important thing is you have to start with the first season, which is back in 2005. Mm -hmm. So, and that's doctor number nine. You have to start with him. Okay. Start with that. And then you work your way through because like, if you, um, if you start kind of later or like you watch like the Christmas episodes and stuff, it, you kind of, you know, you kind of get a sense of the characters, but not really. And then maybe some of the references may be kind of like, Wee, you know, over your head, right? That um, is the experience I had, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I would definitely recommend if you want to get into it, you start with season one of the 2005 um, one. Because, like, obviously, you know, Doctor Who's been on for almost, almost 60 years now. It's crazy. <laughs> which yeah. is crazy. But yeah, the 2005 season one, start with that and you work your way through. And it's so good. It's good I've advice. Been, I've been watching since 2005, so it's been 15 years now. Wow. <laughs> it's hard to believe, but <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what you're talking about then. Um, and I've actually been on your show before. We talked about Tim Burton. I have to say, very impressed with you and Jared's research. I felt like I couldn't, I was like, he was like, what all research did you do for this? And I was like, oh no, I, I was like, I've seen a lot of Tim Burton movies. I can, 
attest to that. And we've covered him quite a few times on the show. So luckily I had things to say, but I think I'm going to bone up a little bit more next time I come on because I was like, oh no, you guys had so many cool facts. I feel like I learned a lot in that episode. So thank you so much for having me on there. It was great to have you on. Yeah, thank you. And um, so, Melissa, on this show, my guest always picks the movie. So what movie did you choose to talk about today? I chose one of my absolute favorite Humphrey Bogart films, uh, The African Queen. 1951. I actually have seen this movie before. So <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I've never <laughs> seen this, but I've seen this one. But um, before we go too much further, I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis really quick. And then we're going to get into like your experience with this movie when you first saw it and things like that. Um, quick reminder, guys, this show is not spoiler free. So if this is your first time listening, we are going to talk spoilers. So if you want to see this movie, you can. I rented it on iTunes, um, but I'm sure you can rent it on Amazon or anywhere else where you rent movies. But here is the synopsis for the film. After religious spinster Rowe's missionary brother is killed in World War I, Africa, dissolute steamer Captain Charles offers her safe passage. She's not satisfied, so she persuades him to destroy a German gunboat. The two spend their time fighting with each other rather than the Germans. Time alone on the river leads to love. That was kind of a, a an interesting synopsis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should have picked a different one, but... Um, Nonetheless, it got the job done. It told us what the movie was about. Um, so what what was your first experience with this movie? Like, when did you first see it? I, I first saw it, I think, probably when I was maybe, I would say maybe 11 or 12, something like that. Um, somewhere around there. And I just absolutely loved it. It's such a fun film. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just this wild adventure. And I mean, you know, some of the things are a bit far fetched, like that just couldn't happen, but you know what, you just go with it and you have fun with it. And it's just, it's so good. And, and I love like Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn in this, like they're, they go together so well. Like they just, work off each other so well and and i love their performances in it so yeah um and i kind of yes yeah, i've loved it ever since um and that's kind of what got me onto like classic films and stuff because I'm, I'm a sucker for classic films especially like the old black and white films I absolutely love them <laughs> that's awesome so this movie i rented a while back and i can't remember why? So I've seen it like as of this year or early last year is the first time that I saw it. Um, I don't know if it was like on HBO Max and that's how I saw it. I don't remember the timeline, but I kind of uh, walked into it thinking like, oh, I'm probably not going to like this. It, you know, what if it like didn't age well or like, you know, is it just going to be about a bickering couple? Like I had all these weird misconceptions about what it was going to be about and it completely dashed all that it like is not like that at all I absolutely loved it I agree with you a hundred percent the chemistry between Humphrey Bogart and Katherine Hepburn is awesome and I just think like the whole movie kind of went in a different direction than I was expecting and I really liked that like there was an and like you said it's very exciting and fun to watch um Definitely must recommend. So I was I was pretty excited when you picked this one. <laughs> it was, um, it was, I wanted to pick something that was not often talked about. It's not. I feel like I, I feel like it. I don't know. Is it underrated? Maybe can you can you label it as underrated? I don't know. But it just sort of seems that way, or just kind of kicked under the carpet a little bit because. I feel like when you, you know, you hear the name Humphrey Bogart, you immediately think Casablanca or yeah. Maltese Falcon or even uh, one of his other films, Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Mm -hmm. Like you, you think of those ones. You don't necessarily immediately think of the African Queen. And so, yeah, I, I just thought, you know what? It's not one that's talked about, so I'm going to pick that one. And it's, you know, one of my favorite Bogart films. So 
Why not? <laughs> I think it's different from some of those other movies in that it's like not as serious. It's more of like a fun Hollywood action adventure. I mean, you can definitely see that it clearly influenced, you know, Indiana Jones and, you know, maybe like Romancing the Stone. Like it, there are so many films that it influenced that it's almost like it gets eclipsed by those, even though it it led to them. So I yeah. think you're right. I think it is underrated. I Like I said, I hadn't heard a lot about it. I kind of saw it on a whim. It might have been like an, a cheap rental that particular day on iTunes or I don't know what it was. But I was like, why has nobody talked me into watching this before? Like, how come I had this weird idea from just looking at the cover? I made up a narrative that was not what the movie was about. And I loved it. Yeah, I think you're right. It is underrated. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. And the next part I wanted to talk about um, is just like a couple of quick facts. So in this part of the show, I usually say two or three quick facts that are about the movie. And you can, of course, chime in uh, if you have a fact and, you know, just add to it as well. Uh, The first one I have was that Humphrey Bogart's part was actually written as a Cockney river man. But Bogart can't do a Cockney accent. So it was changed to a Canadian. (laughs) (laughs) that's interesting and i i can't imagine him doing that kind of accent or or even not so much him but like another actor doing that character in that kind of way that just seems a bit odd to me (laughs) i guess because she's british and they're in africa maybe you know they they were gonna keep it sort of like british um but I can't picture Bogart doing anything other than how he sounds. Um, <laughs> he sounds like Bugs Bunny to me. Um, <laughs> that's what I always think of when I hear him talk. Um, but he has such a strong, you know, American accent. I mean, to even try to pretend he's Canadian is kind of funny, too. But um, <laughs> they they made the right call not trying to have him do a Cockney accent. We would have had like a Mary Poppins situation with Dick Van Dyke, you know. So I think they yeah. made the right choice. But I did I did think that was interesting. Um, I also read that Lauren Bacall famously ventured along with the filming in Africa to be with her husband, Humphrey Bogart. Uh, she played den mother during the trip, making camp and cooking. Uh, this also marked the beginning of her lifelong friendship with Catherine Hepburn. And I thought that was really sweet. Aw, that is so nice. <laughs> I didn't actually know that. So I think there's just like an energy in this movie of like... Humphrey Bogart and Katherine Hepburn have chemistry, but it really feels like a modern day retelling there might not have even been a romance. They have really good, like, friend chemistry. Like, they seem yeah. like they're enjoying each other's company quite a bit, you know? Yeah. So that kind yeah. of, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, the last thing that I had was that Walt Disney used this film as the basis for Disneyland's Jungle Cruise. Um Which is not surprising because that's automatically what I thought of watching it. I was like, this reminds me of that Jungle Cruise at Disneyland. And also of the remake that's coming out uh, with, um, who is it? Uh, The Rock and, is it Emma Blunt? I don't know. Emily Blunt? Is that who it is? I'm going to look it up. But it reminded me a lot of that movie. Um, like when I saw the trailer for that, I'm like, oh, that's like this movie, The African Queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, d- did you know that about the, the cruise? No, actually, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like not directly ripped from it, but you can definitely see like, obviously Disney saw this movie and thought, hey, there's like a an attraction here. And <laughs> so I kind of I kind of like that. I'm going to look up the Jungle Cruise movie that's coming out um, in 2021 or whenever it's coming out. You know, we don't, I'm doing air quotes because everything is like so delayed. Um, Emily Blunt. That's who I meant to say. I think I try to say like three actresses names that she kind of looks like to me every time I try to say (laughs) her name. Um, But yeah, it, it reminded me a lot of that, of that trailer. So that's not surprising. Hmm. Um, Next, let's talk a little bit about the director. So this was directed by John uh, Hudson, who directed The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, actually, and yes. also The Maltese Falcon. So mm-hmm. he's a big fan of uh, of Bogart. He also directed um, 
he directed a lot, actually. But um, some other ones that I remember personally are like, you know, Annie, the 1982 version, uh, Casino Royale in 1967, and The Red Badge of Courage. So this guy had, you know, a huge career and made many different types of films. Uh, are you familiar with some of his other work, too? Yeah, like, well, I'm familiar with, um, like, yeah, like Maltese Falcon and, um, yeah, you said Treasure of the Sierra Madre? Yeah. Yeah. And um, Annie, of course, and uh, Casino Royale. Those yeah. are the ones I'm most familiar with from him. Because, um, well, I enjoy all those movies. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay, these are like really good films. <laughs> these are good movies that I like. And you can, I feel like they're, even though this one's different and maybe not as remembered as like The Treasure of the Sierra Madre and Maltese Falcon, I do think there's like an energy to how he directed that when I read that, I was like, oh, okay, that's not that surprising. Like, those are really good films and they have such great you know, pacing and direction and it, it feels like they're connected. And then Annie is sort of like the funner part of his directing, you know, um, mm -hmm. I guess the red badge of courage would be more serious, but um, yeah, I was like, okay, this is a guy that we've enjoyed his work a lot, but if you're, you know, probably our age or younger, like, you know, I, you don't necessarily know the name off the top of your head. You just know that you really loved his films. Yeah, like you, you hear like his his name, and and it wouldn't be you, you wouldn't immediately think of a movie. You'd have to like Google it first. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I've seen so many of his movies, but like you know, hear his name, and I was like, uh, who's that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I'm sure there's some film buffs listening. They're like, what? But that's the honest truth. Is like I didn't automatically think of his name, but when I see the body of his work, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm a fan of this director. I really like his stuff. Um. We could talk about the cast, too. I think people are pretty familiar with Humphrey Bogart and Katherine Hepburn, and I think we'll chat about them as we talk about the movie. I think next I want to talk about some of your favorite scenes in the movie. Oh, my goodness. There are <laughs> so many. <laughs> I really love uh, one that, that off the top of my head is at the beginning when we first meet... Um, we first meet everybody, and um, we also meet um, Charlie, Humphrey Bogart's character, and they're all sitting around a table um, having tea. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting, and it's just this, like, they're not they're not talking about anything. He, one's reading newspaper, she's doing whatever she was doing, and Humphrey Bogart's character is sitting there. And it's just kind of this sort of awkward moment. And then, and then all of a sudden you hear Charlie's stomach grumble and it's just <laughs> hilarious because they're just, they're, they're, they know it happened, but they're not really reacting to it. And it's just, oh, it's, it's so funny to me. It just gets me every time because they're just kind of like not sure what to do about it. And then like, you know, Charlie's starting to make jokes about it and it just, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> yes, I think a lot of the tension in the movie comes from, you know, she's this straight-laced missionary, and he's mm -hmm. a little bit of a rascal. He's a he's a kind of a drunk, and he's kind of worldly, you know. Um, in that first scene, I think you're right. Uh, there's all this tension, and I feel like we're we're Humphrey Bogart's character. He's looking around and going like what is happening here? Like, we're not talking, we're not engaging, uh, this is boring, and it's kind of, you know, um, I don't know, puritanical, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> and then the tension is cut with his stomach growl, like you say, and uh, I think, too, it's almost like he farted at the dinner table. It's, like, humiliating that he did that to them. They're just, like, horrified. Like, wow, how uncouth, you know, of you. Um, and then he starts making jokes about it. And yeah, I like that because it sets up a lot about their characters, you know, right away. We, we feel like we learn a little bit about Humphrey Bogart. Although when you see him, I think you kind of know what you're getting yourself into, right? <laughs> like I've never seen a, a movie where he's not him, but, um, well, exactly. yeah, he does yeah. such a good job as his character. Yeah, absolutely. You really get to know everybody sort of even from that simple scene. Like I was just, I love how simple it is and you but you learn so much about everybody in that one scene like you just they're 
polar opposites of each other and it's perfectly clear that they are you know <laughs> and, <laughs> and it just you know it just works so well and and i just yeah i i love like i said like i love how simple it is and it just you know and then yeah learning so much from from that and uh yeah and you do exactly you you do know what you're getting into with Charlie. It's like, oh boy, what what <laughs> shenanigans is he gonna get up to now? <laughs> and also, is the the church scene? That's is that right before the scene? Or, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like this, that scene but, too. Yeah. Because it sets up that okay, it's not like overtly expressed in the movie. But it feels like, I mean, there's a little bit of fun being poked here at the missionaries a little bit because the her her brother is like preaching to them and they don't seem to be receptive to it. And it no. kind of feels like they're out of their element, like they kind of shouldn't be there. Like, and I think that that's really, really funny uh, mm -hmm. and not something I would necessarily expect from like a classic movie. So that kind of surprised me. And then, you know, the the Germans come in it, or, you know, Humphrey Bogart's like warning them like, hey, something bad's happening. Um, a lot of villages are being burned. And mm -hmm. Catherine Hepburn, Hepburn's character is like, man, maybe we should listen to that or do something. And, you know, the the pastor's a little bit um, he's not he's a little sheltered because he's like, oh, we can't leave our flock like we're going to stand our ground. But he really doesn't know what he's committing to yet. Um, and so I think Charlie's character, he's a lot more streetwise, you know, it's like he can see the situation for standing back and he's kind of like, you guys aren't going to survive this. And also, I feel like you don't really know what's going on here. You're not really like, you don't belong here. Um, yeah. and he kind of does a little bit more because he's been there a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Like, I find it interesting that, you know, Charlie, he start he's talking about the war. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, like World War One wartime. And he seems to be the one who knows a lot about this and the countries out at, that are, you know, having issues with each other and all that stuff at that time. And they're like, what? <laughs> what, what, what are you? And they're like, kind of ask the question and I'm kind of paraphrasing. Like, like, what aren't you telling us? Like, how how do we not know this? They're just so kind of in their own little bubble. And yet I find it you know, funny that they're, you know, they've, I think that there was a comment at some point that she had been there for, uh, was it 10 years or something? Oh, and yeah, I think you're right. Like, yeah. You they... feel like they just got there. Like <laughs> I did three, think that. Years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vibe they give off. <laughs> yeah, especially in that whole church scene and like some of the, the camera shots and you see like, you know, people, they're sitting there and they're sort of confused. Right. Like they they're not that, really like, communicating what? and connecting with the locals at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we doing? We're just going to sit here, but <laughs> watch them do what they do. But we don't really know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really like a big thing that struck me about this movie is that it's like very funny and like sort of poking fun, making little comments here and there about about things um and then charlie's reaction to their talking to the locals his face just says it all he's like uh <laughs> what is going on here um but yeah no i love all of that it's so good um yeah <laughs> and that kind of leads into the next scene where um you know they do get attacked mm -hmm. and uh you know the the reverend gets like a black eye essentially and a lot of things get burned down the church gets burned down um her brother passes away he gets sick though yeah. right and that's how he and dies he, yeah he's he but then it's also like he was just totally traumatized by the whole event which yeah i'm sure if you were in his shoes you would be like uh you know but <laughs> But I also think we, you know, in that moment, too, we'd also be a bit like Catherine Hepburn. Like, we would be, like, we could kind of handle ourselves and just, okay, this is what's going on. It's absolutely terrifying, but, okay, I can handle this and get through it. Whereas her brother just completely kind of falls apart at, from that. Yeah, which you're is kind right. Of like, he, he just, he, 
he has that like especially when um you know she takes him to his room and he just has this like facial expression of like uh i like what just went on like he's just completely lost and cuz it was just such an experience that he's just trying to compute it but then he also can't yeah and it's kind of sad in a way for him but yeah but I think it just, it, it comes from him being so sheltered, too. Yeah, like, I think I, so. Probably hadn't been anything major happen up until that point. So then something really big happens, completely unexpected, and it's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of frozen moment of, uh, <laughs> everything's going on and I don't know what to do kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I think maybe they were able to kind of remain neutral because they weren't part of the military. They're kind of like the doctors or nurses in a way. It's like they Mm -hmm. see some of the action, but they don't have to like participate in it. And this was like the first time that that was totally challenged. And it sets up too, I think, that Catherine Hepburn, like you were saying, is so strong. Like we kind of see her as like sheltered and like (laughs) starry-eyed. And then this happens and... I think it's starting to plant the seeds of, like, this This character is going to go through kind of a little bit of a transformation in this movie. I mean, they both do, but that's her arc, yeah. Yeah, I think especially for her, like, I think, like, for Charlie, he's he's been there a long time. He kind of knows things a lot and, you know, certainly knows the river very well and, you know, what to avoid and all that kind of stuff. Whereas she, not so much, but... You know, you really see her grow and develop and, you know, see her that determination in her that, you know, she wants to, you know, get to the point of, well, you know what, let's try and go after those Germans, you know, <laughs> and let's do something about this. And she's just very like, hey, we're going to do this. And, you know, whereas like, you know, Charlie, he's a little bit like, uh... I don't know if we should be doing that, but okay. (laughs) Yeah. Let's do this. (laughs) He's a little jaded, right? I think, you know, he's kind of like his character in Casablanca. He's kind of like, I stay out of all that. And Mm -hmm. she's like, you know, what what the, the Germans in this case did, it was terrible. They burned this whole village down. They killed my brother. Like, we need to stand up to them. And I think he's like afraid of that, but he's also kind of like attracted to that a little bit. Like, he's like, well, okay. Like he, I mean, he does it, but it's like his kind of character arc is more him like getting purpose and, uh, you know, softening and, uh, you know, just being a better human being. I think (laughs) he's really inspired by her, by her, like kind of naive, but still pretty powerful drive throughout the movie. And I think she really kind of changes him. Um, and their experience changes both of them, obviously. But, yeah. Yeah. I think they, yeah, that's that's where they just, they build that, that really kind of, that strong friendship. Mm-hmm. Which then, like, blossoms into that love. But I think, you know, at the, you know, at the point of um, when he's, when he's, like, imitating the animals, making the, the <laughs> animal sounds and whatever, and she's just killing herself laughing. It's like, that's their friendship right there. Like, yeah. he's... He's, you know, he's loosened up a lot, but then he's also trying to kind of loosen her up, too. And and I think he achieves that by just making her die laughing because he's just being a complete nut, right? <laughs> that part but makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> right? It's so good. <laughs> it, it, it felt genuine, like, like yeah. he was doing that and on set making her laugh. So I, I really like that. I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was another scene that you really uh, appreciated in the movie? Oh boy. Um, well, there's one near actually at the end, n- near the end of the movie. Um, I really like when they when they get uh, kind of kidnapped. I guess not really kidnapped, but interrogated by the Germans, mm-hmm. and they both end up on the boat, and they're about to be you know hung for their their crimes and not being truthful and all this kind of stuff and so they want to get married yeah and (laughs) and uh oh you can you're a captain you can do this yep yeah and so you know they they go through the the process of it and then the the line you know i now pronounce you man and wife 
and prepare for the execution. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it obviously, you know, thankfully it's not successful. They don't go through with it, but it's just so funny. It's like, okay, we'll do this for you. Okay, now <laughs> let's go on to the next thing. <laughs> I loved that part because I think like one surprising thing about this movie, the first time I saw it, is how many things happen to them. Like, by this point in the movie, you know, they wanted to go up against the German warship. Um, they've had the boat break down. They, you know, there's a great scene where they both repair the boat together. Um, you know, the the leeches scene happens. Like, um, she ends up having to, like, you know, also go down in the water with him to do stuff. They've had all these great moments together. They've gotten all the way to this point. And then, like you said, the, the Germans interrogate them. And they've fallen in love. And so it's almost like their love and their friendship, they they have so much joy with each other that even in this moment, they're like happy. Like when they pronounce the man and wife, they're like, yay. And it's like a very funny moment because like, okay, they're about to die, but they just are so won over by each other and everything that they've been through that they're kind of like, okay, like clap, clap. This is, we're good. Um, before they're of course saved. But at that point in the movie, I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, I can't believe this scene. Like, <laughs> this is hilarious. Like, after everything they've been through, um, they yeah. go on quite a journey. And yeah, this is probably one of the most iconic scenes for sure. Yeah. And what I what I love most is that I, I kind of feel like this movie's a little bit progressive. Especially for the, for the year that it came out, for 1951, when... You know, it was like, you know, you got the man of the house and the man does all the things and the women's, woman stays home and does the dishes and the whatever and looks after the children and all that kind of stuff, which is fine, but it's like, you know. It's not everybody, <laughs> right. It's not everybody's <laughs> thing. But I love how, you know, they're about to go on this adventure and immediately, like, Charlie has her, like, steering the boat. Mm -hmm. and he's, he's like, you can do it. He's, yeah, he's like, you, you, are, you can do this, and then I'm going to, like, look after the, you know, the steam engine, and I'm going to look after that, and the, it just immediately just happens kind of naturally, mm -hmm. and it, there's no, they, they kind of treat themselves definitely as equals, like, they're not less than one another, and it doesn't matter just because, you know, she's a woman, he's a man, that they have their different roles, they have their role in you know, they do what they do. And it's just, I find that so progressive you're for that time, especially. You're absolutely right. I, that is the biggest thing that I noticed about this movie. A couple things. Number one, um, mm. I might be reading into it, but I felt like there was sort of an anti-colonial message with like how misplaced the missionaries were. And then, you know, the, the place gets burned down and they never portray the people there as like you know in a lot of old movies when they try to go somewhere quote unquote exotic um they portray the local people negatively and i noticed that they did not do that in this movie and also that um humphrey bogart's character it seemed like he had relationships with people there uh as a friend and they're treated like as equal so that right off the mm -hmm. bat i was like that was surprising to me because i mean even when you look at like some of the indiana jones movies they you know they don't age great and there's parts of those movies where you're like wow but in this movie like the locals in the church scene like we talked about earlier are kind of like uh i can't understand what you're saying and i don't know what you're doing here but i'm just gonna let you go on um you do you um and i think that's a really funny perspective from 1951 it's pretty uh self-aware and then yeah. the other thing was her yeah the relationship because you know first of all Kat Catherine hepburn's character she's playing not a 20 year old like you know, a lot of times in these kind of movies, the love interest would have been like super young and she's like mm -hmm. around his age, you know? So, yeah. I mean, he makes jokes about how she's like, you're old now, <laughs> but you know, he's old too. And it is very funny, but I think a lot of the like gender role stuff is explored very interestingly because mm -hmm. um, they're in a situation where they can't really stick to those. Like if they were, you know, back in London or something, um, then there would be a hierarchy between the two of them. But because they're out in the jungle, they're kind of forced to break down those barriers. And, 
you know, he's also not a very traditional man. Like when, like you said, when he's like, hey, you can do this, you can do that. Um, it is, it's something I think she wasn't expecting because I think her whole life she was probably treated like, you know, a Fabergé egg or something like, and yeah. very sheltered. And I think um, her journey of like really coming out of her shell and uh, um, that was a lame pun, but I didn't mean to make it. Um, <laughs> but um, is really because... You know, she came over to Africa as a missionary, but she probably has a sense of adventure, right? Or she would have stayed home. Um, and I think she has like a thirst for that. And it's funny when he makes her uh, steer the ship after that, she's like, I've got a taste for it now. <laughs> like, I want to <laughs> keep going. And you can feel her excitement. And I think a lot of a lot of women seeing that can kind of relate to that. So um, you're yeah. so right. Their relationship feels very we keep saying friendship because it feels like they really get to know each other on a friendship level first. And then the love kind of comes second. And I, I don't think that's typical of old movies. So yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I know I rambled there, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was very progressive also. Yeah. I think that, you know, in a lot of, you know, classic films, it's, you know, sort of more the, you know, depending on the film too, it's more like, Oh, the damsel in distress. Sure. The, you know, not very resourceful, a little bit really naive and really, you know, relying on the, the male figure. And which, okay, that's fine. And you understand for the time that's sure. kind of just the viewpoints of everybody, right? Like, mm-hmm. you totally get it. But in this one, it's just, like, they, there there is no, you know, there like you said, like you kind of mentioned, like, hierarchy. There's none of that. It's, they're on an equal plane and... You know, they're, they have kind of their, their mission and this is what they're doing. And it just really seems so, it seems so natural too. Like they're, you know, she's doing something that maybe she wanted to do at some point, like have that more of an adventure. And she was held back by her kind of bubble of society saying, no, you can't do this because of your gender. And, you know, no, that that's a man's thing, you know, but now she gets the opportunity and she's just like, yes. <laughs> like you know, like she, like you had quoted, like you know, I have a taste for this now. Like she's just <laughs> so excited. Like she gets to do something that she wouldn't ordinarily get to do, and you know, be given that opportunity. And you know, and I think that's where their friendship really blossoms because she, you know, is seen as somebody who's competent and capable, yeah, and not somebody who's just a naive, sheltered person who has to rely on a male figure you know that you know even if you know she was you know left alone at some point she probably would have you know she would have been fine like she would have been able to you know (laughs) figure things out and defend herself if needed and you know kind of like you know it kind of it kind of reminds me of like um we had mentioned briefly like indiana jones yeah um, like raiders of the lost ark with marion i love that yeah Marion has that feistiness and she's also resourceful. Like when she's running away from the guy and she hits him over the head with the the frying pan. Like <laughs> that's the resourcefulness right there. So like I can see that in this movie too where she's just, you know, she's found her role in steering the ship and everything, but she's also, you know, helpful and and you know, even a little bit like um I don't know if insightful is the right word, but like when they're they're going by like the the um where the germans are and she said that you know at this point oh they'll get the sun in their eyes yeah you not know, them and it's like it ends up happening and it's like you know she's you know she's just not just a pretty face right she's thinking like okay oh at this point of the day it's going to the sun's going to be in their eyes so we can get past them and be fine you know yeah so <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, they help each other a lot too in the yeah. movie. Um they find that they have different strengths and they're needed at different times. So he really respects her because yeah, she's coming up with a lot of really great ideas and he can teach her some things too. So it's way more equal in that way. I feel like a lot of times this kind of movie would be like a prissy princess from England has to go on a wild adventure and then she has a growth specifically because of him. But like you're saying, a lot of the growth is like internal. It's like because she is discovering that she has the power to do these things. 
And that's really fun to see. And yeah, their their relationship feels equal towards the end because it's like, you know, she's down there rep- repairing the propeller and she's, you know, uh, coming up with great ideas to get away from the enemy. Like you almost can picture the two of them going on all these adventures together and it just sounds so fun. And yeah. uh, the, the little back and forth bickering that they have is more like uh, banter and it's not like mean. You know, I mean, there are parts where it's mean and they have to like apologize, but for the most part, like, <laughs> it's it's them getting to know each other and also breaking down their ideas about each other. They have, like, each other stereotyped, I think, you know? She has them yeah. stereotyped as kind of like this rough, drunk guy and that's it. And then he's like, you're a, you know, lady that's, you know, hoity-toity or whatever. And, like, mm-hmm. through getting to know each other, they realize that that's not true and they actually begin to really enjoy each other's company and... It's so great. I don't know. I can't say enough great things about it. I really like it. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, and I, I'm sure he, he thought at some point, like, she was just going to complain the whole time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she never does. Like, no. she, this is, this is a situation we're in and she, she deals with it so well. She never complains. She doesn't whine. She's not, uh, and she, yeah. And I, and I think that he kind of admires that about her. Like, you know, She's not she's not one to be you know that that prissy person who he maybe thought she was. But now getting to know her it's like okay you're you're not you're not, you're not like all the other you know women that he may have encountered at some point who may have been uh, kind of you know a little bit uptight not very <laughs> open about things and very stuck in in their path of society right yeah. Where she's just like, no, oh, I'm carving my own path, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And I love that scene where yeah. she hugs him and she's like, we can do this. I know we can. And he's like, he goes, yes, I agree. And then his face is like scared, like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like she's more gung ho than he is. And she really pushes him like in a good way uh, throughout the movie. So, yeah, totally agree. Um, was there like another scene that you were kind of wanting to chat about? No pressure. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just want to make sure you get all of them in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's so many of them. There are. Um, you know, I really like that, you know, when they're, like, they're fixing the propeller together. Yes. Like, he, he's a little bit hesitant about it. Like, you know, I don't want to deal with a drowned woman. And, you know, like, <laughs> he's really kind of, he's, it, and it's not so much... You know, it kind of seems a bit sexist, but it's not. It's him genuinely worrying about her. But she's like, no, I'm going to come help you. And, you know, and then working on that and fixing it up. And, you know, even, you know, I I really love that scene because it's just, it's, you know, them really getting to know each other again, you know, and it's that she's like, oh, we can fix this. And, you know, you welding, is that the right word? (laughs) (laughs) Well. (laughs) <laughs> yes you know, where, where she's kind of unsure about it and he's just kind of laughing like yeah this is what it is and okay we'll we'll fix it up and let's do this and and i also really love um the scene um like with the the leeches when he's yes. kind of thinking, he's he's like oh he's kind of freaking out shaking like oh the gross things and she's just like, oh, where's the salt? Where's the salt? And just, okay, take them off and whatever. And I just, I love that too. <laughs> it's very equal because it's like, um, you know, she doesn't like see the leeches and scream and run away. And he's mm. left to like pull them off of his body. But we see him so vulnerable because he's kind of been putting on a brave face. And then when this yeah. happens, he just, it's so human. He's just like, oh, like he just has the willies. And even... Like, when I was rewatching it today, I was like, ooh, at that scene, it just, leeches really freak me out. <laughs> They're yeah. gross. And yeah. every time they get in the water in the movie, I'm like, I couldn't do it. I think, I don't think I'd be a Katherine Hepburn type. <laughs> I don't think I'd be as tough as her. But um, when, yeah, he comes out, he takes his shirt off again. So he's like, he looks very vulnerable. He's not like a big buff dude. And um, she sprinkles all that salt on him and gets them all off. And she's like, are you okay? And he's like, oh, I guess. Like, it's just a very funny moment, but very sweet, too, because they're helping yeah. each other. And yeah. 
that scene with the propeller, I agree. I don't think that he ever comes off as like sexist, but I think that, you know, he's, his perception about women are shaped by the time that he's in. So he's like, Mm -hmm. you can't do that. Right. Can you, can you do that? Like, it's like, it's more of like, I'm supposed to not let you do that. Right. And like, sort of, he's challenging his own ideas too of like, well, I don't want you to get hurt. That's why I don't want you to do it. And then she's like, I I can, I can do this. And she like talks him into it. And then he lets her do it. I mean, he never tries to stop her really. Um, So yeah, just another, like you said, kind of progressive part about the movie, about them really trusting each other. Yeah, because I think he's he's very, you know, casual in his view of like, you know, I think he's casual in his view of women. Like he, yeah. he sort of has that bit of a view, like he could sort of see that where he's sort of questioning like, well, I'm OK with this, but ugh, I don't like, is this a good idea? Like he's, he's sort of having that internal debate of uh, <laughs> is this is a good idea. But then once like she's like, you know what? No, I'm going to do this. And OK, he's fine. Like he, he he's not having that debate in his head of should I let her do this? Like, I, I'm okay with it, but it's like, ugh. But then it's like, you know what? No, this is fine. We can, we work together. We'll do this and, you know, everything will be, will be okay. And um, so, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, I haven't read the book, but I wonder how true it is to the book. I was actually talking to a friend tonight about the, about the movie because this is random. Uh, but when I watch this movie, I think of a, a, a childhood friend I had. I think of her mom. I'm like, your mom weirdly reminds me of Katherine Hepburn in this movie. And I, I don't know why. And she goes, whoa, that's so weird that you're saying that because my mom loves this movie. <laughs> so maybe it's intentional. I don't know. And she's like, and I just read the book um, and I'm thinking about watching it with her. And uh, she was asking me about like the ending. She's like, is the ending satisfying? Because in the book, I was kind of... Oh. And I was like, oh, I wonder how it ends. Because in the movie, it's very, you know, Hollywood happy ending. So I'm kind of curious. And I wonder, you know, what's her character like in the book? Was that something that was changed for the movie? Or, you know, I wonder, it, because it was written such a long time ago, I, wa- I wonder how they viewed that character back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have not I have not read the book, but I'd like to. Because it yeah. would be interesting to see how, you know, how loyal it is to, to the book. Like, how much is the 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 book was put into the movie. Yeah. I feel like I would feel like some of it would have been at least a good chunk of it. Yeah. Uh, maybe some things change as as that happens with films oh, sure. that are based on books. Like things are changed and whatever, but it still works in the film. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I I know I recently um I had read uh the Maltese Falcon book. Oh really? And it is like I basically like I started reading it and I'm like I'm seeing scene for scene in the movie. Wow. Like the dialogue and there's like subtle changes but nothing drastic and it's just like I'm seeing this. I'm seeing everybody. It's just incredible. I mean, the book itself isn't very big. Like it's a pretty small book. Oh, okay. But but still, like for reading it it's like I'm seeing scene for scene. So I wonder how it would be with the African Queen. Yeah. Inter- yeah. And I guess the person that she was telling me the person that wrote The African Queen also wrote um what the movie Midway was based on, you know that film that came out kind of recently with Tom Hanks. And oh. she saw that Midway movie and she was like, "Oh, that was good." And so she was like, "I want to, you know, learn more about this." And then she saw that he the same author had written the African Queen, and so she read that, and she still hasn't seen the movie yet. <laughs> so, wow, I I would like to read the Maltese Falcon though too. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's it's, such a, it's good story. a great. Yeah, it's it's a good read, and like I love the movie too. It's it's you know another favorite of mine. It's just so good. That's one of my <laughs> husband's favorite films, and somehow you know how there's always a couple movies that you're like you never get around to seeing. We finally got around to seeing it, um, I think a few years ago, and I absolutely love it. I own it. Um, so yeah, I love that movie too. It's so good. <laughs> it's it's uh, influenced my style too, like in in real life. Where I saw it, one of the women in the in the movie was wearing this kind of fedora that was sort of a like an angled fedora thing like it was sort of a short brim at the top kind of going around and then it was sort of like a side thing it's kind of hard to describe but 
I really love the hat. I absolutely loved it. And I couldn't find something that was sort of like that because it's sort of like a bit like an Indiana Jones fedora style. Yeah. And, um, but just it kind of had this like bigger, like broader side to it. And but I ended up finding a hat that was sort of that same style. So kind of cool. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I love. You know that that's something too that I think surprises a lot of people is that. Um, if they get into like the noir genre, like the roles that the femme fatales have uh, and women have in general, even though, you know, maybe under a modern lens, we might say like, oh, you know, they're kind of stereotyped and things like that, but they get so much screen time and they get such cool roles and lines that a lot of, you know, movie buffs that like classic film tend to like those a lot because of that. And I think that's something that, like, if you haven't dipped your toe in that world, you'll probably be pretty surprised and really enjoy them. And yes, the fashion. Absolutely. I love, I love that era of fashion. So totally yeah. agree. Um, yeah. Were there any other uh, scenes in this one that we haven't talked about yet? I mean, like, there's a scene, like, when they're caught in the reeds. And oh, yeah. Kinda, like, it's not, the, the river's not flooded. So it's like they're trying to drag themselves through the mud and muck <laughs> and everything. And <laughs> but then I find I love how, you know, they're they're still kind of stuck. But then the river floods and they end up out back, you know, um, you know, floating again, which is kind of awesome. It's like, oh, we're, <laughs> we're moving. Kind of thing. Yeah. But then, um... then I love they get out of that, but then, oh no, the Germans are coming back into the reeds again. <laughs> <laughs> so good. There's so many good scenes. Um, how about the scene where he goes off on her and, like, says a bunch of mean things when he's drunk? And she uh, waits till he's, like, passed out, and she starts pouring all of his alcohol out, and he, he starts trying to sweet talk her. I think that's a really funny scene, too. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like you need a clear head like you're not being very nice like we can no. fix this we'll just dump all your alcohol out and it <laughs> works um he wakes up and he's very refreshed and he's clear headed and i think he's kind of almost relieved that he doesn't have that temptation anymore um i think so like he, he kind of feels a bit freed from that like there's yeah. a sense of, like oh okay I don't have any, you know, there's not a drop of gin on this boat. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm okay. That's a good scene to me. And then also, um, there's a funny scene where she, uh, she has to change. It's like towards the beginning of the movie. And she's like, she bathes in the lake, in the river, and then she gets yes. back in. And she's like, don't look. And he's very gentlemanly. He's trying really hard not to look. She sets up that little flap so she can change and then it rains that night uh and and she has to invite him in <laughs> to her little tent <laughs> and that is super cute to me it also weirdly you know maybe this is just because i'm obsessed with dc but a lot of the in the boat stuff reminded me of like wonder woman like i have to think patty jenkins yeah. kind of drew on some of that right yeah <laughs> like the sleeping next to each other and then also just like yeah just like the awkwardness of like a man and a woman and her being well in this case in in wonder woman's case she was very like open about it but the in this yeah. one she wasn't but as time wears on it's like all bets are off and i think that's a funny like we get this scene where she's really nervous about it and then towards the end she's just peeling her clothes off she's like th this is not important in the grand scheme of what's happening right now <laughs> um, but by that point, they really know each other pretty well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah. Oh, I find I love Humphrey Bogart's facial expression when like, oh, I can't like when Catherine Hepburn. Like, I can't get back in the boat. Can you help me? Yeah. And he, he kind of has this face of like, OK, uh, here's my here's my arm and hand and, <laughs> you know, get yourself back in the boat kind of thing. And it's just I find it kind of adorable because like. He he want he's like okay I'm I'm gonna help you but then he's also like well okay I'm I'm gonna try and be gentlemanly about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is where we learn he may have a rough exterior, but he's just your average guy here. And I also yeah. think too it's funny because this came out in the fifties, right? So like her, you know, what she thinks of as like scandalous undergarments are are not. 
by this point. So probably very funny for the audience even back then to see them like freaking out about seeing her very covered up nightgown under her dress or whatever. <laughs> so that's kind of a funny moment too. By the end, she's kind of wearing a, you know, a almost sexy bikini-esque version of that. Um, not too raunchy, but like she's got the kind of torn up, uh, torn up shirt and skirt combo. Um, it, it starts to look a little bit more modern, I think, towards the end and, and kind of gives her that like adventurer, you know, look. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we probably covered like the biggest scenes, I think. Um, and the movie is actually only like an hour and 45 minutes. The runtime's not super long, I noticed. No, it's it doesn't feel like a very long film, but I think it just it goes it paces so well. Like it, it does. Has to, it, it starts out like you kind of get to know everybody. It's a little bit slower. But then once they get into that boat, it's like you're off on the adventure and you see them going through all the waterfalls and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> doing basically almost whitewater rafting. Yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So all these things, and it just it keeps you going until absolutely the end of the film, and you don't realize how much time has passed until you get to the end of the film, and it's like, oh wow, like it was already an hour, whatever, you know. Yeah, I think it's a really good runtime for something that's kind of actiony, you know, based, yeah. and so you don't want it to be too long, um, no. and not a moment feels wasted. I know there's that. That's something too. I think that's interesting about this movie. Sometimes when you recommend older films um modern audiences have like a pacing problem with them where they're like oh old movies are so slow and they are like a lot slower pace than modern films but i would say this yeah. one is pretty similar to modern films in its pacing um I'm, you know i would say so too it's very quick like yeah. it's it doesn't it doesn't waste time and it also it I, if it uses its time wisely yes. i think it you get to know the characters you they go on their adventure they have their banter everything and then it just yeah I, I think it it would stand up to a to a modern film for sure yeah and I think uh, Humphrey Bogart won an Oscar for this movie and yes I, and I read something like that means he's the last person born in the previous century to win this Oscar at this time or something like that. Um, but, you know, these are two huge stars. I mean, people know who Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn are, but still, like, you can't minimize the fact that these are really, really big names and two powerhouses in, like, a very, very, you know, fun and exciting movie. So I, I think it's a, if if you're looking to, like, for a starting point, it, it's probably a good beginner classic film, I would think. I would say so. I think if somebody wanted to... Um, you know, get into classic films or, or at least, you know, explore them a little bit, I would definitely say start with African Queen because I think it's a good a good jump start to getting into other films. Yeah. Well, this brings me to my last couple of questions for you. Uh, number one, if you had to summarize, what do you love about this movie? Why, why do you think you've seen it so many times? Oh... I I love this movie because it's the I, I love the the relationship between between Charlie and Rose Humphrey Bogart Catherine Hepburn their their relationship is just so fun and loving and you know I love that they see each other as equals that there's no I'm better than you um, you know and and I love how you know. And I do love how progressive the movie is, especially for the time. I think that's that's pretty amazing for the for the time period and how just they they treat all the characters and there there never seems to be that stereotypical character mm -hmm. that you oh like they they don't not even within the village either like it doesn't seem to have that stereotypical this is what each person has to look like whatever this is who they look like and who they how and they. You know, they don't interact with them in any weird way. It's yeah. just, this is, you know, who they are. And, you know, there's kind of that, you know, respect there. Especially, like, with Charlie, like, he has that relationship with them. And yeah. he's totally comfortable with them. Like, he's not like, who's that? You know, he's he's totally cool with them. And, you know, and I just, I, and I love how, how fun the, the movie is. Like, 
you know, yeah, there's some things that are a little bit far fetched, like the, the <laughs> torpedoes and the wooden boat, or right. you know, <laughs> uh, some of those things are a little far fetched, but that's what makes the movie so much fun. And I just, I love it. It's almost a, a feel good action film <laughs> i think so like it's 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 like if uh you know die hard had uh two two lovers in the middle of it no but um it it's very um yeah i i do we keep saying the word progressive because i think it is and um i like their relationship a lot i think a lot of times in movies uh especially older films like we mentioned i think the man and woman dynamic could come off as like kind of adversarial and a lot of the humor comes from like i can't possibly understand what it's like being a woman or a man you know and in this movie like they kind of poke fun at that and then they sort of break that down in the movie like you don't really get that and by the end of it you know they're both in this on this adventure together and uh i felt i found the relationship more believable and very funny and yeah i think it's a really good starting point as we were saying to you know classic film and and i think it ages super well i think you know if you if you pop this in you'll be surprised like i was and and very much enjoy it and i enjoy it because of their relationship and because of all the fun stuff that happens in the movie um and I guess I'm kind of answering two questions at once. We're, we're <laughs> we've already kind of covered this in a way, but to summarize it again, like uh, how how do you pitch this to someone that hasn't seen it before? Uh, I would say if you you know if if somebody asks, well, what what's a good um, classic movie to watch? Like I've never watched it before, um, or I'm curious, maybe. Maybe more along the lines of, oh, I've seen this this movie, African Queen. I'm kind of curious about it. Like, have you seen it? And like, oh, I'd be like, yeah, I definitely have seen it. And, you know, definitely worth a watch based on just, it's a, a little bit of a, like a toned down, uh, or if you want to make the pun, watered down. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I started it earlier with the egg thing, so it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I got I got Water the runs down the river. Yeah, <laughs> but like a, a definitely a the watered down Indiana Jones. Yeah, I think that if you like Indiana Jones, then you should check out the stuff it's based on. You know, the serials <laughs> um, that 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 it's based on, and one of them is the African Queen. That's like a big you know influencer and you can really see that in this movie. I think if you okay. like Indiana Jones, you pretty much have to see this. So that could be a good sell right there. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Like yeah, if you've if you've seen that you have to or or you see this movie and then you go watch Indiana Jones if you haven't seen Indiana Jones. That's a good point. This could be a double feature. Um I think a good introduction to that whole, you know, action adventure film. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun Jump. to see like different time periods you know the 50s yeah. version versus the 80s versus now um mm -hmm. you know i don't know what would be now the closest thing i could think of was the mummy but that was the 90s but um <laughs> <laughs> anyway um so melissa thank you so much for coming on where, where can people find you um well thank you so much for having me on um it was an absolute pleasure to be on and a lot of fun um and they can, if people want to find me on the social medias, they can find me on Twitter and Instagram. And my Twitter handle is uh, MissMelissaN25. And on Instagram, it's also MissMelissaN25. Um, and if you're into drawing and art and all that kind of stuff, I recently made a Instagram for all my drawings that I do. And oh, it's, awesome. Yeah. It's called Scribbles of a Wannabe Drawer. So you can find me there. Awesome. Well, you're going to have to think of your next movie because this was really fun and I want to have you back soon. Uh, but thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. <laughs>